I'm reading my scriptures because I'll be presenting a presentation in a few weeks. About what's going on in Europe, which is bad and is on its way here. Yes, Tucker and Glenn have just warned Christians that something tremendous is on its way, and that we must all be prepared to battle it. This is not something to take lightly. Therefore, you should pay great attention to the nuances in the video. But first, please subscribe so that we may show the world how many people are on God's side. Now let's get started. In the video you just saw, we can see Glenn is concerned about what is occurring in Europe and is now warning Christians all around the world that what is happening there will soon come to America. Let's take a moment to pray with Glenn Beck before hearing what Tucker and Glenn have to say about the United States of America. I love you so much. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for Tucker. We thank you for everything he has already revealed and done. We pray for your blessings on him and our talk today. For whatever occurs tonight, whether on stage or off stage, with all of us, or just one of us. We request that your will be done because we are your servants and are grateful to serve at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for that. Some biblical scholars are true scholars. We were speaking about, they were teaching me about the end times. The entire time I'm thinking, this sounds familiar. I believe I am seeing some of this now. We reached the finish and we were all in tears since it could be. Everyone always says this. The apostle said this and they were mistaken, so they were most likely incorrect. But it feels like the end times. Glenn is very correct. This feels just like the end times. There are simply too many things going on around us at the same time. That we fail to see what is occurring across the world. The Israel-Palestine conflict has turned the Middle East on its head and everyone on the planet has a stake in this tiny piece of land. Every day, a nuclear weapon enters this ever-escalating battle, and we are witnessing the fulfillment of numerous prophecies from the book of Revelation. And the end arrives, but I wonder why we'd be terrified of that. That's the point of the book of Revelation. That is the point of prophesy. So don't be frightened. That's correct. He's telling you that you will not know the hour. But at the same time, let us not disregard what Jesus says, but look for these things, because they will happen and you will know the hour is approaching. Glenn is correct. We are not asked to be fearful of the end times. But that does not mean we should not be aware of what is going on in the world. We are witnessing many wars around us, just as Christ predicted in the book of Matthew 24, 68. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do not be concerned, for all of this must happen, but the end is not yet. For country shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of sadness. How awesome is that? The world is experiencing exactly what Christ predicted. And these are simply the beginning of the world's sorrows. If this is just the beginning, I can't imagine the destruction that awaits the globe. But this is when things take an unexpected turn. Looking for what I'm looking for in Europe, you'll come across stuff that will make you go, what the hell? This is something I have never seen before. Women's actions alone are incredible in their evilness. It's incredible how nasty that is. I saw a video of three guys in Europe and a woman doing something. I'm not sure what she did, but they throw her down to the ground and start kicking her. And that is my wife. That is my daughter. And even if she isn't my daughter, she could be. You don't treat her like that. Glenn is correct. Society as a whole has begun to disintegrate, and moral degeneration is manifesting itself in the form of women's abuse. Men all over the world are becoming more comfortable inflicting harm on women in public. The worst aspect is that the public simply stands and watches while it happens. Glenn is absolutely correct that the woman you are watching being beaten up is someone's daughter wife, mother, and so on. As Christians, we must advocate for our women when we witness injustices against them. Anarchists, socialists, and I believe globalists will collaborate to destroy Israel, destabilize the Middle East and Europe, and then spread to and collapse America. I could picture it happening. This is the main warning that Glenn is trying to convey to us. Christian, pay heed. The globe may appear to be deeply split right now, battling over little disagreements. But every political elite will eventually band together to get rid of Israel, and the destabilization that they seek will reach American shores and wreak devastation on this country. 
So let me tell you, I have no idea, do you? I know, but I can't say. I'll say this. Trump is winning. That is a fact that is not made public because the purpose of the polls is to influence people's behavior. They truly want to know how things are doing in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania. They're not showing it to anyone. They're just trying to figure out how much to spend. They have no need to lie at all. They have a lot of money and every reason to hire the greatest posters in the world, and this applies to both sides. I happen to know that internals on both sides show Trump considerably ahead in battleground states. That would, as we can see, they have now shifted to discussing the forthcoming U.S. elections. Tucker is correct. Many of the published polling statistics are untrustworthy because they contain numerous inaccuracies, many of which are both accidental and purposeful. That being said, Tucker, a senior journalist, can certify that Trump is ahead in the polls. This is fantastic news for Christians in the United States because it indicates that even if everything goes wrong, the country will have a strong leader with conservative beliefs to guide it through. I guess between 3 and 10 Christians vote. Did you know that? 3 and 10. Something like that. It is an extremely low number. It's not as you'd expect. If our churches would just advise people to vote and to utilize the scriptures to determine what is good and evil. You understand this? My goodness. Wow, it is quite surprising. I never imagined that the number of Christians voting would be so low. Glenn is completely correct. Every Christian in the United States who is able to vote must go to a polling center on election day and utilize the Bible to determine who would make a good leader for the country. As Christians, we have a responsibility to participate in the selection of our nation's leaders. We can't expect God to handle everything if we don't do our share. Many Christians believe that participating in the electoral process is a complete hoax. Because it is corrupt. But that is precisely the method that allows people like Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh to take government and impose unbiblical and blasphemous policies that cause friction among Christians. Christians need to be clear about this. You cannot simply pray for someone who maintains Christian ideals to be in office. You must go out and vote for the candidate who you believe would best protect Christian ideals. Is battery acid for the soul? Oh, do you think? Yeah, you have to. You must understand this from the beginning because fame is transitory. So, you're continuously the game that was played. I cannot believe I am saying this. Could, at the very least. I could feel the impact. And that's very intoxicating. It's really dangerously intoxicating. I could feel it and didn't like it. And I left. And I should admit that I didn't like it because part of me did. Exactly. Okay, so I had to get out of there. My urging was, if you don't leave now, you won't leave with your soul. I want my soul. Here's the revised version with corrected grammar and improved clarity. And that was, did you, to be more specific, feel that was a message you received? We can see that Glenn and Tucker are now discussing their roles in the secular world as figures in entertainment, a field that carries high risks of leading one astray, and the industry is, by nature, vicious and often works against everything God cherishes. It's disheartening to see so many megachurch pastors who have preached the gospel become entangled in scandals within the church. As Christians, we must learn to distinguish between what is eternal and what is fleeting. We need to keep our focus on God if we truly want to call Him our friend and father. When it comes down to choosing between the world and our souls, we should always choose the latter just as Glenn did. These are indeed frightening times we live in. The world is increasingly resembling Sodom and Gomorrah, destroying the God-fearing foundations on which it was built. The situation in the Middle East is especially reaching a critical point. As Israel's enemies unite in an attempt to wipe it off the map, recently Iran has officially entered the scene, firing hundreds of missiles at Israel, destroying property and taking lives. This reminds us of Christ's warning that we will hear of wars and rumors of wars, Yet this will only be the beginning of sorrows. For Christians, this will be a particularly challenging time, marked by suffering and persecution. Let's turn to Christ's words in Matthew, where he warns us, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, 
the love of many shall wax cold. Just as Christ said, look at the world around us. Christian persecution is at an all-time high. Many nations are increasingly hostile toward Christians. Trust has faded. Lust has replaced love. And many hearts have grown cold. Even the love of mothers has diminished, leading to the rise of abortions. Every word that Christ spoke is being fulfilled word for word. While the world is more connected than ever, its connection to God is weaker than ever. The elites and the corrupt continue their actions blinded by deception. But as Christians, we are called to be the salt of the earth as Christ instructed us, and to spread His gospel, which is desperately needed. We are truly blessed to have people like Glenn and Tucker, who, in this age of media and entertainment, stand for what is right and speak the truth. It's remarkable to see men who are not afraid to call out wrongs and who stay prayerful in all they do. As we live in the end times, let's remain steadfast in our mission to preach to all nations and spread the love of Christ. If you've watched this video to this point, I have a special offer for you. Click the link on the left side of the screen now to access our exclusive content. You'll join a community of over 100 like-minded individuals and unlock special access to our content before anyone else.